Jamie Kern Lima defied top male beauty executives who told her women would never buy makeup from her. And when I, I just can't still believe that line. And went on to become a makeup mogul, selling it cosmetics company for $1.2 billion and becoming the first female CEO of L'Oreal. Now in her recent book, Believe It, which just celebrated its seventh week on the New York Times bestseller list, she's empowering women of all ages to go from the underestimated to the unstoppable. Please welcome Jamie Kern Lima. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Tamron, thank you so much for having me. I am so fired up watching all the guests on your show today. So it's, I'm excited. It's great. To me too. Here. You know, I got to tell you, the reason why I scoff at that line that men told you that you your product wouldn't sell is because we know the primary consumer of cosmetics are women. And here you are mm -hmm. in rooms where people who don't use the product are telling you how it's done. Mm -hmm. I, it's just still stunning to me. Yeah, that's been my story. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, the days I was a Denny's waitress, I couldn't have imagined selling a business for, for over a billion dollars and starting it in my living room. But my whole journey was really that way, Tamron. It was, it was other people saying that they didn't think that the beauty industry uh, would embrace a brand that, you know, showed real people as models. And, you know, the whole journey was that way. I have hereditary rosacea. And so for me, um, I can never find a product that works. And that's really where the idea for It Cosmetics was born. Uh, but then it kind of got bigger. Like, yeah. well, what if I created a brand that showed, you know, real people every age and, and shape and size and skin tone and skin challenge and called them beautiful and, and meant it. Uh, but when I had this idea, right, and anyone who's listening to us is watching us right now, we have ideas sometimes and we yeah. feel them in our gut, like we're supposed to, you know, give it or offer it or, uh, you know, create it or whatever it is. And then we do it. And all of a sudden, everyone around us is like, I don't know. I don't believe in it. I don't think that's going to work. And my whole journey is really a girl going from not believing in herself to learning how to believe in herself. And, and I think really learning the, the greatest form of rebellion, I would say as a woman, especially right now, is making that decision to trust ourselves. Yeah. Even when it feels like everyone else's opinion doesn't get our dream or our idea. Um, and had I listened to the hundreds of no's I got over the years from beauty stores or beauty retailers, especially the early years, like had I ever listened to all that rejection over my own self, like over my own intuition, um, I wouldn't be here today. It Absolutely. cosmetics would have well, never. Well, that's the key. I mean, listen, rebels yeah. just don't walk through the door. They kick down the door, but it's usually partly pushed through, honestly. Um, and and, and it, you, in your book, you wrote, you, you talked about the most rebellious and vulnerable thing you've ever done. And, and you obviously have been this rule breaker in the cosmetics industry. But to your point, it's trickled into other points in your life where once you know how to trust your gut, you then lean on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. And I think, you know, everyone watching us right now live, like if we all just get still for a second, we kind of know like if we're in the right job or if we're in the right relationship or we all kind of know, but we start to lose touch with our gut over time, right? And especially as women, when we're raised to be people pleasers and we start, you know, making decision by consensus, mm -hmm. we, we forget to even how to hear ourselves. And I think that, you know, the greatest decisions that we make in life come down to uh, trusting ourselves. It's, it's how we become the person we're born to be. And, you know, a couple of years into It Cosmetics, we were still getting hundreds of no's. I didn't know how the brand was going to make it. Um, all the stores kept telling me in all the meetings that they just didn't think women would ever buy makeup from images that looked like real people. They would always tell me they have to be these unattainable right. images of aspiration to sell. And it was really hard to not change all the things they told me to change and to, and to stay to my truth. Um, and as you shared, I mean, there was one point a couple of years into our business, I didn't know, you know, we were going to go bankrupt at any moment and mm. a potential investor was interested. And I was so excited because they were really well known. And we did so many meetings with them and I thought they were going to invest. And I was like, if they invest, I'm not going to go bankrupt and they can help me get in stores. And on the, the final meeting, uh, the head guy was about three feet from me, Tamron. Right. Uh, and I thought he's going to change my life right now. And in that moment, he, he says to me, you know, we really like your product, uh, but it's a no, we're going to pass on investing in it cosmetics. And when I said, 
okay, can you, you know, can you tell me why? Because feedback is usually a gift. And he paused for a long time and he says, do you want me to be really honest with you? And I said, yes, please. And he looked at me and he was mm-hmm. like three feet from me. <laughs> and he says, uh, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you oh. with your body and your weight. And Tamron, I, I remember in that moment, I actually never even felt anger toward him. What I remember in that moment was first like a lifetime of bodied out flooding my, my, my body. But I remember this moment, Tamron, and these uh-huh. are the moments that change our life. Like every woman listening. I'm so excited. <laughs> I remember in that moment when he said that, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone right. who looks like you with your body and your weight. I got this feeling in my gut that said he's wrong. Right. I didn't know how I was going to prove it. I didn't know. I didn't have any proof wow. around me. My idea was going to work, but I held on to that feeling. And for the next six years, because I didn't hear from him for six more years, every time I was tempted to replay those thoughts, right? Anytime someone's hurt us, sometimes we replay those thoughts mm-hmm. in our head. I would have to literally turn down the volume. I oh talk about gosh. how to do this in my book. I would turn down the volume on his words, turn up the volume on my own gut. Oh. And um, the day L'Oreal bought our company for over a billion dollars cash, it made the press everywhere. And I heard from him. I bet uh, you did. Investor. Listen, yeah, he said, that, that, listen, I knew where this story was going because I knew you were going to hear from him. As they said, yes. the movie Pretty Woman, big mistake. Huge. Well, yes. thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Congratulations on this incredible journey and how you've shared with others how to become a rule breaker in whatever industry you're in. Jamie's book is called Believe It, How to Go from Underestimated to Unstoppable. It's available now.